Well, hello, hello. It has been some time. The last proper video that I didn't film ages ago was possibly when I first got my speed triple 1050 at the back end of 2018. It is now the 19th of April 2019 and we're riding a brand new Scramble 1200 XE that I took delivery of yesterday and I couldn't be happier with this motorcycle it's an absolute beast it's absolutely amazing as we uh, head over the over the river into county of north yorkshire uh, i'm on my way up to see my good friend ben in uh, teesside this morning it's uh, currently five past eight on a, on a beautiful spring day it's uh, set up to be an absolutely fantastic weekend, Easter weekend, so if you're out on the bike, have fun, uh, it's going to be pretty good. I'm not used to the whole vlogging thing, I've not done it in a while. Sorry if I sound a bit muffled, um, I don't know why, I'm sure maybe the audio's a bit shit, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. New helmet as well, new RI Tro Cross 4 noisy helmet so I apologize for any wind noise you may hear I took my hand off the grip there my my little hands got a bit cold there but uh, the XC wow what a bike some of you may or may not know that I have I, I went to the launch of this bad boy uh, at the XL in, in um, London in October last year I believe and that was such a good event and uh, well I was sold the viaduct over there yeah, let's, uh, let's do a bit of standing up. Yeah, I was totally sold when I, when I went to the launch of uh, and watched like Ernie Vigil rip it around that little track. And the bike itself is absolutely amazing. I mean, I could rattle off loads of specs and shit for you all morning, but I don't, I'm not about that. I'll just, uh, I'll just tell you what I like about it. If you want to look at specs, go on Triumph's website. Head over to Triumph and uh, they can tell you all the specs. I know, I, I know it's like, got about 90 horsepower and pretty much as much torque the torque on this thing is pretty much one of its best features if i'm honest with you it's like i say it's almost got as much torque as horsepower and it absolutely rips i mean i've got it in road mode at the minute but when you put it into sport mode like the throttle response is that much more sharp that you, yeah you can just this bike is, is meant for being sent let's be honest hear some sort of whistling I've got earplugs in I don't normally ride with earplugs but I went to the opticians and got my eyes tested uh, and then about a year later I got my ears tested and they were like yeah you've um, you've got a bit of hearing loss there so uh, be careful so now I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a all about all about the earplugs but I've got these really good earplugs they're called plug phones the headphones and earplugs at the same time so if you're like me and you have an intercom system, you sometimes, especially if you've got knackered hearing, you won't be able to hear the intercom if you've got earplugs in. Whereas with these plug phones, you know you can get the best of both worlds. They cut up, they cut up, they cut out up to 32 decibels or something, I think. So the, they make your riding experience a lot more tolerable, especially on a naked bike like this, and you wear a noisy helmet like I do. They make it a lot more tolerable. Plus, you can hear you, you can still hear your music and your phone and all your comms and that sort of stuff. So I. Yeah, check them out on Amazon, they're about 25 quid. Give them a go. I mean, I was looking at getting some uh, like professional in ear monitors or custom molded earplug headphones, but they're, you got, you're talking about 200 quid, and I didn't have the money at the time. So, for 25 quid, these plug phones seemed alright so far. I really like them. They're comfy. I mean, you do have to push them right, right right down into your ear roll i mean like right in there you have to get good get in there good and deep but they do block out a lot of noise uh and since i'm doing a i'm doing a 90 mile a day commute from bradford to york on a speed triple that's uh you need that noise reduction cool so what else has been going on in the chris motor world well i had a baby 
well not me personally but me and my girlfriend had a baby i mentioned that in the in the last update video back in october yeah she's four and a half months old now how mental is that yeah that happened my only like gripe about this bike was how much it cost but on a pcp deal I think I'm paying about 149, 143, yeah, 143 pound a month for it over three years. It's uh, easily affordable to uh, anybody that wants one, especially if you can't just fork out 12 and a half grand. But to be fair, you do get quite a lot of motorbikes for your money. Like I say, you get a, well something that's properly specced up for adventure, and that's all this bike really is. It's a naked adventure bike, styled classically. I know a lot of people have been banding around all different types of phrases and genres. I mean, it's a genres of motorbike, categories of motorbike that this thing falls into. And I think it falls into a couple, to be honest with you. I think it comes into your adventure segment, your modern classic segment, and your naked segment, like all in one. All in one. Because it's got the classic sorts of lines that your Bonnevilles have, like your, your teardrop tank and that sort of stuff, but then it's got like modern modern features like this TFT display there which I'm not going to go into today because it's absolutely ridiculous and I don't know half of the things by myself yet because I've not, had, I've not had a proper play there's another viaduct two viaducts in one day it's pretty good isn't it? The, the TFT on this is absolutely mint I think a lot of, I've, I've heard some gripes from customers saying that it could be lighter and sometimes it's always flick between high contrast and low contrast but I've not had an issue with it and now I think I'm about 160 miles into this into this bike now from picking it up yesterday I'm probably at the end of today going to have about 400 miles on and then I'm taking it to, to work to get serviced so it's all good and then and then tomorrow oh the real fun begins but that will be a set of videos all on its own but I, um, yeah, I've got some, got some, I've got some ideas for the 1200 scrambler. So you have to stay tuned for that. But yeah, guys, I can't, I can't fault it. To be honest with you, I love it. I love it. Since I first got my hands on the demo one at Triumph York, I was like, oh yes, proper, proper good bike. And it, it reminds me a lot of. If you guys have been watching my YouTube channel for a while, or you've been following me for some, for. A, for a while then you know I used to have a Husqvarna Nuda and that bike is very like this bike I think if you were to take this bike and my old street scrambler and mash them together you'd have this because that had um, an 870mm seat height this has got an 870mm seat height uh, puts out about 100 horsepower the Nuda was a little bit more I think my needle were putting out about 113 after it had been tuned. Possibly why the engine blew up. But yeah, it's, it's naked, super motorway, same sort of weight, same sort of torque figures, same sorts of horsepower, but this one's a little bit more. I'm not going to say the noodle wasn't aesthetically pleasing, because it was. Absolutely amazing looking motorbike, and if I could buy another one, I probably would. But I think as I've got older and less sort of sporty, I've, I prefer the classic lines. I mean, I always have preferred the classics, but the Nuda was somewhere else. The Nuda were just like so modern and futuristic looking that you, it'd be hard, it's hard not to like. But I just, I just love the way this bike looks. I think it's one of the best looking bikes I've ever seen. To be honest with you. And I went for the white and green one because I, I just preferred it to the blue and black. The blue and black is stunning, but the white and green is oh, its absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I just love it, that, that off-white. I want to get the tank painted so the green stripe is gone. But it's all this off-white colour. And maybe get some, maybe keep these green pinstripes, but get rid of the big stripe. That'd be pretty cool, and I just completely missed that signpost. Can't remember the where the way I'm going now, but I'm in Arrogate now. I'm in Arrogate, where we don't say the H. It's straight up Arrogate, unless you're posh 
and then you say Harrogate I'm from Harrogate remember you are all bloody scum you bloody peasants that's the beauty I mean Bradford gets a bad rap for being quite horrible I mean I've lived there what six months now um, and the place is growing on me I'll be honest with you I don't mind it as much as I as I used to and yet within within half an hour you're in the Yorkshire Dales it's mint from York it's about an hour before you're in Dales so if you want to go out on your motorbike Bradford's like an, an ideal starting point really it's mint I just want to find a better house because the one we've got is really small let's talk about what else can we talk about the brakes on this bike are absolutely, absolutely mint as well big Brembo M50 calipers up front and then a, a big Brembo caliper on the back which is mint as well because it's on top of the swing arm which is one of my gripes about my old street scrambler was like if you've marketed a bike for sort of being able to do off-roading why is the caliper underneath the swing arm because that's just asking for trouble isn't it really I mean I took that I took my bike I think I think I like to think that I pushed the street scrambler to its limit but I possibly didn't who knows but I reckon and there's possibly people that have done hard more hardcore off-roading on it but when you bike is like one of your most valuable possessions and it costs about 10 grand you don't really want to send it and smash fuck out of it really to be fair I'm going to off-road this at some point um, it's currently got the, um, the Metza uh, Torrance tyres on which I, I, don't, I don't mind they're really good on the road and they're pretty decent in the dry off-road but when you start getting onto wet mud and grass and they've just, they're just got no grip at all so I will be putting some novelties on this at some point and then, yeah, going hard on the off-road. Because I want it, I want to... I want to use it for what it's for. Doing some green lanes, doing some off-roading. And then I want to, if I can get the time off and the money, go to Morocco on this thing. Get the ferry down to Bilbao in Spain. And ride it to Morocco. Go in the desert. That's just like my dream go in the desert be absolutely amazing and a lot of people have said that this bike's too heavy for any real off-roading but to be honest with you when you're riding it it's it's not that heavy I don't have a problem with the weight I don't have a problem with the height just you just deal with it I think when you've ridden like supermotors and motocross bikes before that are really tall you just kind of get used to the height and I don't know, know how to like settle your body on them and how to, you know, move one arse cheek off so you get your feet on the floor. It's not, it's not a big deal to be fair, you just got to sort of confidence with it. Six speed gearbox rather than five on the bike on the street scrambler. Heated grips are standard. This and the XE version of the XC has, um, as the IMU Corning Traction Control self cancelling indicators, which I haven't really figured out yet. Uh, they've got oh, so it's packed. It's packed with tech. I, I could go into it, but like I said, I, I don't. I don't really. I haven't played with it enough to be able to explain it all. So once I'm more familiar with the bike and I've ridden it a lot more and I find out all its little features and its quirks and stuff. I'll be able to explain it and let you guys know about it. And it's, it's keyless as well, which I wasn't really a fan of when keyless technology first came out. But I actually, it's, it's growing on me actually. I, saying that, I don't know where my key is. I think it's in my pocket. That's that's the only worry, is when you have a keyless bike, is where the fuck have I put my key? Because you can start it, say you left your key on the petrol pump at the petrol station you're at, undo your fuel cap, Monza fuel cap by the way uh, fill your bike up start the bike because it's still in range and then ride off yeah your bike will still run until you turn it off again but then you've got no way of starting it 
So you're pretty, you're pretty buggered, to be fair. But it is pretty cool being able to just start your bike without having to put a key in. I don't have any accessories on this yet. I'm waiting for them to come back into stock because uh, the ones that I wanted are out of stock. So I think I'll have them next week. And I'll do some pickies. I'll put some pickies on Insta when they're in. High level mudguard to begin with because I think that just absolutely sets it off, to be honest with you. The high level mudguard. It's mint. Like it, just, it just moves. It just shifts. And that's what this motor the high the high power motor in this bike is, is fucking awesome for no matter what gear you're in it just tanks it just you can just send it it's awesome 21 inch front wheel you do have to work the bike a bit on the in the turn but i like that mate so i really like the tiger 800 xcx and xca and the 1200 because you, you've got to work the bike just that little bit more this you've just kind of got to muscle it well the suspension is super plush you can just smash it off bumps it just soaks it up compared to the street scrambler which I thought were a little bit hard I mean I didn't gripe about it I just thought it was I just lived with it this thing you can just, you can just bounce it off speed bumps up curbs it's a proper little hooligan machine and it just sucks but when the twin the twin all in shocks from the rear Fan fantastic found myself a little spot i don't know where i am i'm not going up there i think someone lives up there but this this is the triumph scrambler 1200 xe but extreme edition which i thought was a little bit cheesy but it is what it is yeah it's absolutely mint i love it can't I can't fault it in any way to be honest with you. Got my Krieg on the back because I've got to go pick some shit up there. But just just running it in. Just running it in. First 500 miles. And then it'll be phew, gravel trails all day long, baby. Pipes are starting to blow up already. That's good. Just just look at it, it's got such a powerful stance. You, when you ride it, you feel like an absolute boss. You really, really do. So good. So good. If any of you guys are interested in this bike, I highly suggest going out and demoing one. Get down to your local Triumph dealer and give it a go. Because it's awesome. High level mudguard. I'm thinking about putting the smaller indicators on because them ones are pretty ridiculous. But for now, it doesn't really bother me. But look at it. It just it's just begging to be covered in muck. It really is. It does need a radiator guard. I'll give it that. It's like something that this bike really needs. It's a decent rad guard. Because if you are going to do any off roading on it, that radiator will just get absolutely just rammed if you have a look and yeah, it's got a, a sort of rad guard on it but it's not that great so if you are going to do any green learning you want to uh, get a decent rad guard on right i've rabbited let's continue